Hi everyone, I'm happy to tell you that I'm back from my prolonged absence and intend to make at least a couple of videos a week from now on. To get the ball rolling again, I thought we'd look at some further games from Bobby Fischer's 60 memorable games that haven't already been done for YouTube. As I'm sure most of you know, Bobby Fischer was the 11th world champion of chess and is considered by many as one of the greatest players of all time. The first game I'd like to look at was a game he played in 1960 in West Berlin against Klaus Dager, who was and still is a very strong German player. At the time, Dager was an international master and he is now a grandmaster. Fischer, aged 17 at the time, had become a grandmaster about 18 months previously. He had the white pieces and opened as usual with e4, after which came e6, so the French defence, and in particular after d4, d5, knight c3, and bishop b4, the infamous winnower variation, which gave Fischer trouble throughout his entire chess career. Part of the problem was that he consistently played the same openings, so his opponents knew what to expect, and this gave them some preparation advantage, which is what Darga aimed to make use of in this game continued along the main line with e5, c5, a3, bishop takes c3 check and b takes c3. So black has given up his dark squared bishop in order to damage the white pawn structure. However, this has weakened his king side and his dark squares in general. In combination with the bishop pair, this gives white strong attacking chances, which he has to utilize quickly as the long-term pawn structure favors black. Daga continued with the main move, knight e7, which invites a poison pawn variation with queen g4, and that leads to very sharp and interesting lines. However, the move that Fischer generally played here was a4, which he did in this game too. The idea, of course, is to get the dangerous dark squared bishop to a3 from where it can bear down viciously on the a3 to f8 diagonal into black's position. Of this move, a4, Fischer writes, Smyslov's favorite, largely responsible for Botvinnik's giving up the win of a variation. Sharper is queen g4. I felt that black's carapace would be cracked only by positional means, but my results have been disheartening. And the game now took an unusual path with queen c7. More common is knight bc6, followed up by knight f3, and now queen a5, threatening to take on c3 with check. And the correct way to meet this move is with queen d2. If instead bishop d2, black can gain an edge with bishop d7 and after bishop e2 the best move is simply c4 and the sample line that Fischer gives goes h4 f6 h5 f takes e5 it's all best play according to Fischer h6 g takes h6 rook takes h6 knight g6 and black has a small edge so at move 9, queen d2 is preferable to avoid this at this stage instead of bishop d2. And um, bishop d7 is best play after that, followed up with bishop d3, where black can either close things up with c4, as we just saw, and hope that his knights will outmaneuver white's bishops in the resultant closed position, and that the pressure on white's a-pawn here from the queen and the bishop will uh, give him some play. Or he can play f6 in order to attack the white pawn center, ultimately creating a stronger pawn center for himself and opening the f-file for attacking chances. And in the book, Fischer gives sample lines in both continuations, concluding that the latter with f6 is better and that he may yet be forced to admit that the winnower is a sound defense. He added, however, that he doubted that would happen because, as a defense, it's anti-positional and weakens the king side, which are words that have become famous in debates about the winnower all over the world. 
50 years later it still has some supporters as an opening even at the highest level but most grandmasters have come to agree with Fisher's position uh, Fisher's opinion sorry okay back to the game continuation after Daga's Queen C7 play continued with Knight F3 and now B6 with the idea of playing Bishop A6 and solving Black's problem of his bad light squared bishop given his pawn structure his central pawns are on uh, light squares and this problem of the light squared bishop is a characteristic of the French defense and here Fisher threw in bishop b5 check which brings into question the validity of Darga's last move after he plays bishop d7 and here black would ha be happy to exchange light squared bishops as indicated so Fisher now retreated with bishop d3 and after knight bc6 black has gained a tempo but it's only to have played his pawn to b6 which uh, doesn't really amount to much in the position okay so now uh, fisher castled and daga continued with a c4 which is an important move because routinely castling here would be a big mistake let's see now um, okay so castles and if you want to try and spot why then stop the video now okay most of you should know that there is that because there is no black knight on f6 and combine that with the fact that white has control of the g5 square he is now able to play the common sacrifice bishop takes h7 check with a winning attack after king takes h7 declining the sacrifice also gives white a big advantage now comes knight g5 check threatening queen h5 and a winning attack if the king returns to the back rank forces king g6 and now comes queen g4 with big ad advantage and attack for white so back to the game continuation in order to avoid that attack Daga played c4 at this stage and here Fisher played bishop e2 and uh, now Daga continued with one of the standard moves in the French defense which is f6 as already said is in order to challenge the white pawn center and essentially the French is a counter attacking system and moves like f6 here creating a stronger pawn center and opening the f file is what it's all about and Fisher came up with a very creative response over the board as both players are now out of preparation the move he played was bishop, H, bishop a3 which in his own words keeps the tension in the center at the cost of a pawn he gives uh, rook e1 as a solid but less aggressive alternative and also mentions that he had played the same sacrifice against Edmar Mednes in the 1962 US championships with the slight difference that black's b pawn was still on b7 and added that in that game the sacrifice was almost certainly unsound and Mednes went on to win that game despite refusing to accept the offered pawn. Daga however accepted with f takes e5 and Fisher answered with d takes e5 which is the correct move of course if instead knight takes e5 white doesn't have anything to show for the pawn after knight takes e5 d takes e5 queen takes e5 rook e1 queen takes c1 and now bishop h5 check g6 and bishop g4 is the best play. If instead bishop takes e7, king takes e7, hoping for queen takes d5 fails because queen takes a1 is now possible for black and is easily winning. So bishop g6 is the right move. And um, now comes queen f6, and white has some compensation for the two pawns, but not enough. And with correct play, black should be able to grind out the win from this position quite easily okay so back to the game continuation which was d takes e5 so now knight takes e5 and here the correct move is rook e1 threatening knight takes e5 on the next move and after queen takes e5 bishop h5 check discovering an attack on the queen and winning it and Daga dealt with this by playing knight 7c6 which is one of many possible defenses 
to uh, the setup that Fisher has created here, which um, I'll go into more depth in the second part of this video because that's in the part one.